Yo, yo, what up guys? So, last couple days, I'm getting some data logs in, trying to um, just get the car really just dialed in. Like it's so close, because it's got that little bit of a hesitation still. We're playing around with that, getting launch control right, getting timing right, you know, playing around with different ethanol levels. Right now, I'm at the highest I've ever been at E80. Um, just making sure everything's Gucci. I also just ordered a new five bar sensor so we can go above like 33-ish PSI. Um, AMS intercooler, it should be, it's one that Ed uses, my tuner. He makes 600 some wheel and does good with that intercooler and it's supposedly one of the lightest. So saving weight on the nose of the car, awesome for me. That's the heaviest thing on the nose of the car for me without, well I mean the, obviously the AC condenser is lighter than the intercooler but AC is gone. So a little bit lighter in the front end, um, should flow better, cool better, anyway. Um, and then the blaze intake, which we'll get more on that eventually, but that, that's not going to be here for a minute. So, going out do logs the other night, um, testing out launch control because I'm trying to figure out if I want a lower launch boost because it doesn't spin off the get-go, but once boost really kicks in, like uh, let's say around 6,000 RPM or whatever from a dig, mind you it's on this sh shit road uh, next door, but... Um, it wants to spin the front, especially now that it has a wave track, like a real LSD, both tires in the front will lock up. The car doesn't read. Now, mind you, I don't know the electronic slogan mumbo jumbo behind it, but my buddy was telling me that the uh, wheel speed delta, because of the LSD, the car doesn't know that it has a real LSD, so it doesn't engage the rear tires as hard as it should. Anyway, so I did a fat freaking burnout <laughs> before doing this this test and did fat for it was great did the pool and i logged this i didn't log the burnout but i logged that run and so i did a freaking fat burnout go ahead and do it first gear all the boost second gear all the boost after that it's really dying like it's not hitting max boost and it's taking longer to get on boost i didn't realize it during the pool because you know i'm doing a pool and there's traffic there's things and i get on the highway it takes me to the highway that road i was on i get on the highway go to do a brake boost log in third and I don't really pay attention to the AP because I'm like I don't have a mount for it so I just like kind of hit the button and throw it on my lap I do brake boost and mind you because I have a Haldex switch so my Haldex switch you pop it on it brings the light on the screen even when you enable Haldex again it keeps that light on the screen anyway so I'm on the highway doing a brake boost pull and the car just feels like dog shit like absolute dog shit I'm like what's going on I was like okay well maybe something with the Haldex or the, the light that the Haldex switch triggers has something to do with it. It does not, or it didn't. So I, I came back to the house, turned off the car, opened the door, closed the door, turned, fired the car back up, went to go try to do another pull. It takes a lot longer to get on the boost and max boost is, let's see, I was hitting like 33, 34 and holding that and I was, I'm only seeing, some pulls it only goes 18, but normally since I've done like multiple pulls since then trying to troubleshoot, it, I usually see about 24 and then it by red line it drops off to 18. I was like frick um, thinking it might be a, a boost leak from doing that burnout or that pool so the next day I go I pull all the boost pipes off and I put all of them off inspected all the silicone expected everything charge pipe everything make sure there's no holes no gashes no anything everything looks good put everything back together go back out yesterday do some logs same thing so I sent that to um, Cliff Aaron and I think that's it. And then at that point, right after I sent it to them, Ed actually got back to me um, from the logs when the night that stuff did happen. It was like, hey, um, boost is really falling off towards the end. It might be your wastegate actuator uh, voltage dropping. Maybe your wastegate actuator is going bad. So he said, add that to the Cobb log list. Go do some logs. Send them to me. Okay. So I go do that. Check the logs. I send the cliff. Because, you know, as busy as shit. I've um, got the parameters I'm looking for, which is basically whatever you set your wastegate voltage to. Um, when your wastegate is 100% closed, it should be that voltage. And if it's 100% closed and at that voltage, then it's good. So, okay, frick. It's not bad. So, the only thing left in the system really to check is my PVC. My PVC is good for sure. I don't have uh, GTI. GTI 
have uh, the secondary air injection, and that pump can spring a leak, and Percentage of Rage Works makes a delete for that, for anybody wondering, but you can get a boost leak there, but I don't have that because it's an R. The only thing left is um, diverter valve. So my boy Greg, um, he's QAE for Lockheed, where I work, whatever. He has a, a Golf R, super clean car, super awesome guy. He, uh, he runs a CTS um, low off, so I actually asked my boy Alex first because he lives right down the road on his GTI, and he runs an aftermarket one. So I asked Greg, Greg still has his. So he brought this to work today, gave this to me. So I'm gonna go throw this on the car and then I'm gonna pull the exhaust pipe off because yesterday after doing all those pulls, everything was too hot to try and tech, check play on the turbo. So um, I'll throw this on, check play, and go off for some pulls as long as the play isn't bad. Obviously if there's real bad play with the turbo, then the turbo's going out. But I don't hear, there's no extra noises. I don't hear any, you know, like, like if you were to pop an intercooler hose off or something, you would hear, you know, with the windows down, get slow roll on, like you would hear all that extra air. Um, I don't have, everything sounds normal. In the car, the logs look like, so if you compare a log when I was full boost, like everything's normal to now, the boost curve necessarily, like the way it moves, looks the exact same as if I was at full boost, but it, because mine tapers off towards the end, because the air here sucks, but um, yeah, the only thing left to really like verify that it isn't the turbo is this, and hopefully it's not because this Sunday is. I missed the first autocross here because we were somewhere doing something, or the car wasn't ready yet, it was still in the break in tune. So, I'm gonna try this. If this isn't it, then the turbo is probably going out. Which now you guys are like, Oh, EQT turbo, oh, look at you, turbo blue. No. Relax, I've had this turbo on for over two years now, beating the ever-living shit out of it. Go look at my videos, you'll see I, I beat the living crap out of this car. So, I'm, yeah, I don't know. But hopefully this works, I don't think it will, but I gotta rule everything out. And now that I'm, well, hint, hint, moving to sea level, um, having the XL turbo would be really beneficial. So, especially with a port ahead, it'd be really, really nice. So let's go do this after my seven minute rant. Apologize, but got to give you all the facts. All right, so um, by myself today, don't have my girlfriend helping me. She's in there breaking down the bed. And I'm going to make a whole other video explaining where we're going, what we're doing, how we're doing it, all that mumbo jumbo. So took the intake off real quick, reach way back. Um, basically right under the turbo inlet towards the passenger side of the car. You feel this big freaking brick. Um, feel around towards the motor side. You'll feel the connector off the brick. Comes off, you squeeze it, pull it off. That's for the, the wastegate actuator. So I pulled it off, clicked it, pulled it off, clicked it again, made sure. Connector is seated, okay? I and mean, we weren't having any voltage issues anyway. Just want to double check. Um, I can't really... Hold the, I don't know if I can zoom in enough. I don't think you'll be able to see it at all. The wastegate is completely shut, as it should be. I, I am gonna fire the car up for a moment with the down pipe off, just to make sure that the wastegate is staying closed. But um, getting in here, feeling around, like there's no, no more play than what it had when I got it, which I was, Kind of, like I said, I was kind of thinking it would be the turbo since I've been beating the ever-living crap out of it now for over 30,000 miles. Um, I'm going to be quiet for a second let you listen. You can't even hear anything. Like, it's just like the ever slightest, um, like, left to right kind of movement. With the, like, pushing, like, grabbing the nut and going in and out, there's, there's zero... So I guess lateral movement, and there's a little bit of action. Maybe I have the words backwards. I'm not a rocking scientist. I don't know the terminology, but um, it feels like it should. So there's that. Oh boy. So next up. Oh, wrong way. Sorry guys, I know I'm freaking ugly. Um, we're gonna pull the diverter valve off. Try that. We'll pull the DV off with the intake back on, the downpipe back on and go for a drive. I don't know what, 
else it could be. I don't know where there could be any other leaks. The motor sounds healthy. Like it, I, I can still bang gear, it fires up fine, it drives fine. There's no, the only thing is that it just, it doesn't make boost. And like I said, the curve, the, the boost curve looks the same on the logs. So I can bring that up later and show you because I'm at like 4,000 whatever feet altitude, I peak, well not even peak, I, I see 34 pounds of boost for the majority of the pool and once we get closer to the higher like 6,000 it starts to drop off because the turbo just can't keep up with this thin ass air I guess or I don't really know the science behind it like I said I'm not, I'm not a rocket scientist but at sea level when I did my sea level logs in Austin it's holding that you know almost 34 pounds to red line and it would spike like 40 something here it's like spiking like like 37 38 depending on how low and how much throttle, how low of an RPM and how much throttle I give it, it'll spike pretty high. Either way, um, it's weird that the boost curves are identical and there was no tuning changes between, because it was out, like I said, like during a pull, like I haven't gotten a revision since the other day because I was just trying to get the tune like, a little bit more smooth and like I was saying, I was testing launch control to see if I need to turn launch control down. Um, because where I'm going to do autocross this weekend, it's not the best service. So I don't want to be like spinning all over the place from the, from the line. I want to go and have this one event and take first place and leave this area, you know, with that first place go. So, yeah, I just really freaking hope that this works. So I'm going to go use the bathroom real quick and place the DV, put everything back on. And we'll go for a drive. All right, guys. So just unscrewed my diverter valve for the first time ever when I pulled it off because this this piece actually come over here real quick. So this is this one's mine, obviously. Over here we got Greg's. So normally when I pull it off, it everything stays together as it should, you know. But this uh, piece right here comes off and it exposes the spring and everything, you know, in there. So the first time ever trying to pull it off and it doesn't, um, it just doesn't. Actually, I can see chew up marks. So. This part right here, this part that holds the piston is actually stuck in the turbo and it's like I can feel like part of it's stuck and like part of it's stuck trying to come out. Um, and it's like part of it's like sucked into the turbo actually. I don't know if you guys, let me take this. I just like ran inside with freaking excitement to have her grab the camera. You guys can maybe kind of see if I try and spin it, you can see that piece like right in there is like like deformed and stuck inside the turbo. Um, so this might actually be my freaking issue. Oh yeah, would you look at that? It uh, ate itself the fuck alive. Thanks. Your boy is so freaking happy right now. I thought my turbo was done. I didn't think I'd be able to race this. Look, and it just fell apart and the more pieces in my hand. It looks absolutely, positively fried. Look at that. Like it was stuck or something and just got absolutely cooked. So that is awesome news. Uh, the river valve literally fell apart. I'm so freaking stoked. I was like so depressed and upset thinking I wouldn't be able to race this weekend. I'm not gonna, well now there's pieces of this plastic in the turbo that I'm gonna have to fish out. So let's not get too excited yet. This is why it's great to have really smart women around you constantly. I'm trying to sit here and trying to fish this fucker out. Mechanical fingers, yada yada. Why don't you just take the vacuum to it? Why don't I just take the vacuum to it? So here we are, vacuuming out my turbo. All right, so I vacuumed it out, took my little Mirror here, got in there, made sure there was no bits of anything in there. Um, poked around and where the DV goes, make sure there was no bits in there. We're gonna slap everything back on, intake, downpipe, diverter valve, go for a freaking drive. I'm just like so relieved. I'm like extremely, like extreme. I was just like dancing around the house in joy. <laughs> like, oh my God, I finally fixed it out. It's been like three or so days of troubleshooting. And honestly, I didn't even think to pick up the camera when I was doing things. So when, when things, happen like this I tend to like get very like like tunnel vision in a way not in the sense of 
it has to be a boost leak or you know whatever whatever but i get like tunnel vision like i need to focus on the car and on the car only get the music on get a beer out and just get to work i didn't even think to pick up the camera but when i got home today and i was like oh shit like i should probably make a video out of this because if it's something dumb then i need to let the people know and sure as shit something freaking dumb and i let you guys know so we'll get this thing back together she'll hop in the car with me we'll go for a little i'll know right away as soon as I get on the throttle, I'll know if it's working or not because it, it, it was like really slow to get on boost. I'm surprised that even with that much damage, it even let me get the 24 pounds of boost. So here's a little tech tip for uh, you guys. So the bottom screw for the DV, you can't really get your fingers to. And if you can, you got really freaking small hands. But using a ball head Allen number one is a huge advantage. But you put this on there, you try to get to it, it might fall off and get a little piece of cloth you might have to fold it once or twice we'll see here I'll, I'll fold it once you stick it in the head and this works for even not ball heads um, and this kind of kind of like force it in there boom and now it's not gonna come off so you ever got a tight space um, you can't really work with a little bit of cloth in there especially if you have a ball head um, obviously you can see you get that much more of an angle into a spot so Makes things really nice. All right, guys, she is all back together in all of her glory. If you want, I'm gonna make a separate video, kind of giving you guys updates on the APR catch can and what other random things. Um, just whatever. But so far, so great. The only thing wrong with it is it's the plate is leaking. You probably maybe see the little bit of wetness. No, my my what you call it light is dead but these screws right here you can kind of see these ones sit flush these back ones do not and it's leaking back here they expedited me a new plate it'll be here i think tomorrow actually um so we'll swap that out send the other one back before we swap it out we'll take these screws off the plate once it's off we'll check and see what the baffles look like um i don't even think i edited that video yet so that actually might be in there so if you've seen that Video before this one, well, now you know, but there you go. So I'm gonna clean up a little bit here. Um, go for this test drive, if everything's good, I'll take the Jeep, hook up the trailer, throw my electric jack, my dad got me for Christmas, uh, my tools, my fuel jug, throw all that in the car and get it ready for uh, taking the car to Amarillo tomorrow. All right, guys, the oil is just about warmed up, waiting for these couple of cars to pass by, and we'll give her a rip. Um, I'm kind of nervous, because if it doesn't fix it for some reason, like, I don't know how good this truck is taking freaking ever. But even just like giving it part throttle, like I was saying, like it, you can feel it took longer to get on the boots, obviously, so it was complete, so I feel a difference. I do need new tires. This event's gonna pretty much be the end of these, but 
That's all I got. Car specs. Huge shout out to the homie Greg for uh, bringing me his diverter valve. He runs the CTS one, so he had his just sitting in the car. Doesn't even have, I think he said he got his car to like 13,000 or something, something like that. And uh, yeah, so mine lasted about, about 81,000. I expect this one to last quite a while. And, I'll, and, and after this, if this, this one fails again anytime soon, and I'll go to the DVX, or I tried the Turbo Smart, didn't like it, tried the DV Plus, didn't like that. I don't like the idea of running any type of vacuum hoses, because that's uh, more of a chance to get a boost leak anywhere. So I like the OEM style, um, or at least not having any type of vacuum hoses. So. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, hit that thumbs up for me. Check the links down below for merch. Really love if you guys bought some shirts. It would help me out a ton. And, uh, Let's go to the